I'm a cartoonist. I do a bunch of different things. I do Brood Hollow at BroodHollow.com, Star Slip, Chainsaw Suit. Uh, it's a disaster. But I also do uh, Acquisitions Inc., the C Team, uh, with Penny Arcade every week. And I'm an avid enjoyer of games in general. The first time that I played D&D uh, &D specifically uh, was junior high and my grades were suffering unrelatedly but my parents thought that must have been a, a part of it so they said I couldn't do it anymore and after that I did not play again until I moved up to Seattle so it was a huge stretch of time with no tabletop gaming whatsoever I mean I knew uh, Mike and Jerry from Penny Arcade, I knew that a lot of people that had that interest and now that I was an adult, it seemed like I could make the decision to go ahead and try it again uh, without incursion from my parents and it, was, and it worked out fine. Being a writer, or a cartoonist for that matter, but being a writer and playing a role playing game, it's like having a, a session, or like a writing session where there's just no drafts. It's just the first draft that comes out. And uh, I think what I appreciate it most, what I appreciate most about a role-playing game is how, at least at the tables I played at, everybody is engaged in creating a, uh, like a cohesive storyline, as opposed to, say, a DM having to wrestle opposing ideas into the narrative like we're all sort of trying to build a narrative and we're aware what the other player may not like maybe we can do this a different way it feels very um, cooperative I think I've always doodled uh, when I am paying attention it always, it, so it seems like I'm not paying attention I remember another anecdote from childhood or in high school I was at a presentation uh, somebody was giving a talk about uh, drugs. It's just well, you know, one of the things you get to see in high school. And I was taking notes, and I was drawing in the margins. And she came up after and said, you're really talented. You got a lot of nice drawings on there. And I, at the time, had, I wasn't really sharing this stuff with anybody. So I was like, oh, well, thank you very much. And she said, you shouldn't do it while I'm talking, though. You shouldn't do that. And I, you know, retreated. Uh, but it helps me focus, like it helps me think about, like I'm doodling things that are going on and it puts me in the moment more when I am allowed to do that. The speaking part and the writing part that we're all taking part in, I couldn't write at the same time and pay attention. But drawing is just, a, it's a different muscle entirely. So I can be very engaged while I'm doing that. There was a moment when party had gone down into this uh, cave and one of Kathris's binding constructs is I will find out as much about my god as I can and the cave started to fill with acid and they said well we got to get you out of here and I said you got to leave me here and I attacked Dinar, attacked Ryan's character who had to attack me back to get me out and it just felt like a very cinematic moment where it's like, oh, anything is possible. Like, this is open to us, too. My, my other favorite is just the interaction between Kithris and Walnut and how they were not sure of each other and then became a lot more sure and then, but circumstance is still keeping them separate. And I like the idea of exploring it's like the beats of will they, won't they, but just for friendship. That's sufficient. Even the word just is unacceptable there because it's a compelling thing in and of itself. I've, I've had a lot of meaningful encounters with fans who appreciate Kithris's aromanticism, asexuality. I hope that I'm doing it justice and not treating it as you know a solely comedic construct. I'm not aromantic and I'm not asexual, but as a, 
as a story conceit, as a character conceit. There are a lot of characters and there are a lot of ways to exist and I don't feel like it is a necessary touchstone for every single character has to have romance, has to have these experiences. Uh, it's just not something I was interested in exploring with this character. It's, and it doesn't fit him anyway. He's somebody who very early on decided it's fine, but it's, it's of the mortal plane and I don't really care. It's a kind of a waste of time, you know? Which I do feel, to a degree, is true. A lot of people said after, like, that you can hand wave and it's like, well, maybe, I'll just never be specific. And that's so as not to upset people who need him to be romantic or whatever. But no, he's not. Like, that's, he 100% fits and I wanted to say it and codify it. Like, you wanna, you wanna do stuff that pleases the audience or especially does not like put the audience off. But I feel like the audience that we've accrued, we did, we gathered them because they already liked what we were doing and they saw the same sensibility in us that they have. So it doesn't feel like a twist. It doesn't feel like we have to, you know, bend over backwards and try and make this work for them. Like we are already doing that because that's what we want to do. I think we were lucky in having this group because we already knew each other ahead of time. And we had that basis of understanding what kinds of people we were so that we didn't really have a lot of friction at the table because there wasn't, you know, there weren't players who are uh, trying to cause a fuss at the table or, or maybe they're being negative or whatever the thing is. We all are interested in pursuing the same thing, like exploring this narrative, exploring these characters in this space, as opposed to it being a thing where like, well, I need to be able to do exactly what I want to do all the time. It's very much a party of uh, people who are cooperating, which I think is critical. Um, I think in trying to find a group that you're comfortable with, that's going to be the factor more than anything else. Because you can be friends with somebody, but then I don't know what they need out of this game. I know what I need. I know what I like to do. And I think that as far as the C team goes, a lot of us are the same in that we want to give moments to other players to have. And we always feel very, like, weirdly um, anti having this, uh, I know it was a lot of me today. We did a lot of my stuff today. And everybody else says, no, well, I like seeing your stuff. I like learning about it. And, and then when it's Kate's story next week, it's like, I know I did a lot of talking today. It's like, no, it's fine. We all want to explore your character too. It's kind of a rough time for the world in general. And uh, role playing and tabletop gaming is a chance to actually sit across from somebody and be in a space with a human and to explore uh, a different setting, some somewhere you can you can leave the trappings of your existence behind, which is why I think fantasy is more appealing than like let's play a role playing game about you know the government. Like sure you can, and there are, I'm sure there are good ones, but I'm not interested right now. <laughs> I want to go somewhere else.